Hello and welcome to polyplane.com. Today we're going to be talking about underlays and the picture frame command. Underlays are really important because they allow you to trace over drawings and give you sort of reference points such as registration and scale. And they're really useful for bringing a concept into 3D space. Say you have an idea for a piece of furniture or, you know, a character or whatever. This is a really common way of bringing ideas from 2D to 3D. So here I've drawn a table and I've drawn it in three views. Drawing three views gives you a lot of information and this is a really good practice to draw out a top, front, and right. And you can see their orientation is very similar to a Rhino viewport where it's top, front and right. And the reason we do this is because it allows us to line everything up and make sure it's all kind of working together. So I go over this quite a bit in detail in the sketch to model video series in the store, but I'll give you an overview of what you need to do and why it's important. So I've got my three views here. And one thing I also do just in case the file ever gets rotated accidentally or something, uh, I, I make a little marker here. So the top one says top, the front one has a little F, and the right one has a right. And that's just to remind myself of where I am in space because once you start bringing these in, you're gonna be looking at the underlay from a lot of different views. So it can start to get a little confusing once you have more than two to three views. So what I've done is I've scanned this, I've given it a quick cleanup with the line work and everything. And I want to bring it into Rhino or whatever 3D program. Just about every program on the market today has some sort of underlay ability. In Rhino, you can do this in, in several ways. The first way is I could right click on my viewport name here and just go to viewport properties and bring up a wallpaper. Now with the wallpaper command, if I select my file, click OK. It's going to put it in the background of the viewport, but it's not, you know, it's not attached to a grid. It's not something you can select. It's just like, you know, a background wallpaper like on your, on your desktop. So that's not really going to help us too much. That's great for compositing and that sort of thing, but not at all what we want for this exercise. For this exercise, we want something that we can kind of mess around with. Now, there is a second option I learned about recently. If you go to view background bitmap and place, you can actually do sort of the same thing. In this option, you can select a corner point and scale out your image. But once it's there, it's there. It's not visible in any other view, kind of like what the wallpaper was. You can't select it, but it is locked to your grid. So when you pan around, it's gonna stick to your grid. And you can then come over here and scale it, move it, place it, remove it. You can even, if you've lost your original file, you can extract it and then save it back out, which is actually really useful. I've had to do that a couple of times. So we're going to actually remove the background bitmap and I'm going to use my favorite and that's called picture frame. This is probably the most flexible of your options. So if I type picture frame and I select my item here, type zero to give it the starting point there and just drag it out. Hold shift because if you don't hold shift, obviously it's going to be at an arbitrary angle. We want it to be nice and straight up and down so it locks to everything that we've, we've drawn make everything horizontal and vertical. What's cool about this is now it's actually in views. Now it's just a surface. So you can see when I select it, it comes up in the front and right view. But the other really cool thing about this is I can then draw a rectangle out. In this case, I'm just doing it from the top view just to show you this, but I can type trim, actually trim away the excess that I don't need. Now for this, what we want to actually do is line everything up or around zero. So that way we know everything is is perfectly placed, but I wanted to show you that, that this is a surface and it is actually susceptible to all of the commands that you can do to a normal surface. So I can type bend, bend this around or turn on symmetry. And now it's, it's bending around. So it's actually a mapped image on that, on that surface. The reason I like this so much is because I can trim it away and also because I can actually move it around if I need to, which Oftentimes that's what you're gonna need to do. So I've already drawn out one of my curves here. I'm gonna set up all of my views using three copies of this surface. So what I'll do is copy this and then paste it twice, just control V twice. And so now I've got three surfaces as you can see in your object properties window. And I wanna kinda just separate them out for a minute. So first I'm gonna trim away the top view. And since we're in the top view, that doesn't have to go anywhere. Then I'm going to trim away the right view. And you just want to kind of line these up as close as you can, these rectangles that you're drawing out. You don't always have to trim away your underlay, but I like to do it just because I don't want excess material uh, taking up my workspace here. And just get that kind of aligned. Okay, now I'm going to trim that away. 
Okay, so there's my right view. And we're going to repeat the same thing for this one. Top, that oh, looks about right. I'm going to trim this. Okay, so we've got these three views. Next thing I want to do is I'm going to move this to be on center. So because it's all the same image and same, same underlay, we can now start to manipulate these. And I'll know that the top of this lines up uh, with the top of the front view. Now, and then you can also see your drawing errors. So I actually need to scale the right view up just a little bit so it's, uh, it's nice and lined up. And then I'm going to rotate this in the right view and then rotate it in the top view. And you can see what I'm starting to do here. I'm, I'm actually making myself sort of a bounding box for this thing. I'm just going to type zero, make sure it's all, all good. And I'm actually going to move this so that it's dead center of, of zero. So everything is now on zero, uh, except for the middle. So let's, let's do that one too. All right. So now you can see your top view, your right view and your front view, everything's lined up perfect. And now I can just go ahead and start tracing off curves. So I already have a curve that makes this top slab. So I can just type extrude, extrude that out, turn off center snap. And then I don't need that surface anymore. So I can delete it, turn on shaded view here. Okay. That lines up. And then I'm going to do the same thing with all of these other lines. So I'm going to speed up the video here so you can see what I'm doing with the, the actual lines and seeing how they all work together. And real quick, one, one other point that I've kind of forgotten to bring up here is that when you're working, it can actually be really difficult to see what you're working on uh, when you're having to try to look through a surface. So you can actually select both of your surfaces, go to material, and then come down here to transparency and crank that up to like 80%. And what that's gonna give you is a nice ghosted version of your underlay so you can actually see what you're drawing. So I'm gonna speed this back up again and keep on cooking. This is actually a great, great experience to kind of figure out that, oh, you know what? The way that these legs are coming down, it's actually not going to work the way I drew it. So I can then come back here, take these and just mirror them in place, turn off copy and make something that's probably going to be a little more stable. So now I can unlock my surfaces. I lock them during the speed up just to stop selecting them, uh, select my curves, hide those and maybe bring these in just a little bit. I'm just kind of nudging these by hitting alt in my arrows and that's, that allows me to nudge. And cool, we've got this like funky, funky table. I kind of want to make that. But yeah, so you can see how the underlay actually can rapidly help you develop an idea just by bringing in a few drawings and aligning them and then you can trace over the top of them. So the command in Rhino for the picture frame is just picture frame, I'll, I'll put that, uh, that should be showing up right about here. Um, so you can you can see the advantages of that and hopefully you can use it to make some really cool stuff. So, all right, everybody, thanks so much for watching and have a great day. See you next week.